Hello everyone, welcome back. This is Ahmed for Idionics and this is Beginning DevOps. In this section of the class, section 4, we are going to introduce and work with a tool that is called Ansible. Ansible is one of the tools that are used in configuration management. And configuration management may be a new term for some of you. So let's discuss what a configuration management process is and why it is needed. We discussed earlier the need for automation to achieve a true DevOps environment. Remember in the first section of this class when we said that DevOps is a culture and an environment and this culture enables developers to produce software applications in the least possible time and with the most possible efficiency while working together in full collaboration with all other stakeholders of the project like for example the operators, the testers, quality control and other parties. So in order to achieve this there need to be as we have mentioned before a set of tools to help developers, operators and other people working on the same project to achieve this goal. And configuration management is one of the domains or the areas of DevOps that need to be automated. But what is configuration management? Having applications containerized using Docker is one option for what's called instant provisioning. Instant provisioning, as the name implies, means automating the provisioning process so that the developer or the administrator does not have to do it by hand or manually. But it's not the only one. Docker is not the only option and it is not suitable for all cases. You can refer to the end of section 3, the last section, for more discussion about why Docker is not the best choice for all your virtualization needs. For those who require Vagrant as an infrastructure provisioning tool, there should be a way to deploy or customize an application. So in Docker, as we have mentioned in section 3, you abstract the application. You install a container and the container launches the application. The application is immediately ready for you to use. While if you use a Vagrant machine, some Vagrant machines, as we mentioned in the Vagrant section, come pre-bundled with their applications. Like, for example, I can download a Vagrant machine that has Apache and PHP already installed on top of it. But what about the further configuration that I need to do to the machine? What if I need a specific version of PHP to be installed, not the latest? What if I need some custom settings to be applied to Apache and not just the default settings? Like for example, what if I need the mod rewrite module to be enabled? Or what if I need another port for Apache to run on? Or what if I needed another home directory for Apache to start serving files from? This is called configuration. And this is a very, very tiny example of what configuration management can do for you and what the configuration management tools can do in an operating system. Configuration management tools can install and provision a whole environment for you as we are going to see in the project lab that comes at the end of this section. It can create users, configure passwords, create databases, create applications, configure their options and many other tasks. So a question might pop up in your mind. Why not use shell scripting for doing that? After all, you can write a bash script or a corn script depending on your language of choice and start adding all the instructions and the commands that you need to build an infrastructure the way you need. So for example, if your goal was to configure Apache to read from a specific directory, for example, and regard that directory as its home directory or the document root as it is mentioned in the configuration file of Apache, you can just do a shell script and with a simple command like sed or oak or any of the text editing commands that are available in the bash shell, you can instantly change this line in the configuration of Apache and just restart the service. However, this may not be your best choice when it comes to large environments and to complex infrastructures. 
And here's why. Shell scripts are great. The Bash shell, for example, has a huge set of commands and functions to automate any task. But when it comes to DevOps, a shell script will not offer the following. And the following are just an example, a very small example of the shortcomings of shell scripts when it comes to configuring or provisioning a DevOps environment for a project. First, change management documentation is not provided. A document is a crucial element when it comes to changing a running system or configuring a new system. There needs to be a way to document even the slightest change done to a system. This will save you endless hours trying to figure out what went wrong after a series of changes occurred to the system. You can comment your shell script, of course, by adding a hash sign and adding lines of comments that describe what the commands or the instructions that you write in your shell script do. However, this is still not enough and we are going to see later in this section why simple comments are not enough in a shell script. The second shortcoming of shell scripting is called idempotence. An idempotence is a complex term that describes a simple thing. Idempotence refers to the ability to run an operation several times with the same result each time. And in order to elaborate more on this term, let's say for example that you need a script that is going to change, as we have mentioned, a line of text in a configuration file. The script not only needs to change that line of text, it also needs to ensure that this change has not been already done in a previous run of the script. When you run a configuration management script, more than often you are going to need to run it more than once. You are going to need to run it even on a scheduled basis just to ensure that the machine is meeting the configuration tasks, the configuration targets that it has been designed to. So for example, let's say that you need the mod rewrite module to be enabled in Apache. You need to always ensure that this mod module is always enabled and that no administrator, for example, by mistake has commented out that line in the Apache configuration file or by mistake deleted it. So you may want to run your configuration management script several times a day or on a scheduled basis, for example, to ensure that this module is always, always enabled. Running a shell script that number of times will need several tests and several checks to be done on the configuration file of Apache to ensure that the line already exists instead of adding it multiple times without any need, which may cause actually Apache to stop running or it may throw an error when it starts because it found lines of configuration that shouldn't be there. So imagine the number of checks that you need to do on a shell script. First, ensure that the line exists. Second, ensure that, it's, that it exists and it is not commented out. Then, if it does not exist, add it. If it is commented out, just remove the hash or remove the comment sign. However, with Ansible or with configuration management tools in general, you are going to see in the labs that this is just as simple as adding a task to a playbook. And we are going to explain those terms later in this section. Now, in the coming lecture, we are going to start introducing Ansible in more technical terms, and we are going to actually start installing it on our test machines. So until then, see you next.